Welcome everyone. This is Robin West from Zebra Data Services and I'm going to talk to you today about uh, the RFID data services, data services for RFID, and I'm going to go into a little bit of a deep dive on it and dig into how to utilize these services in a fashion that uh, really should help enhance the way that you're working with them, uh, especially the read information that's coming through the readers. Um, you'll have hopefully have seen or heard from the session from Ben Horgan around this service, um, and he's going to do a, a he's doing a general overview of it. Um, this is where I'm going to dig into a lot more around how to actually work with the the reading of the data and the different things that you can do along those lines that um, should help to fit into a lot of different use cases and help to better integrate it in with your systems. So we're going to do an overview and features. Uh, just quick sort of reminder, you know, if, if somebody missed some of the previous content, um, we're going to talk about read modes. And then we're going to go through the event subscription API and uh, the event subscription services and dig into a lot more about how that works and some of the different things you can do with it. So as an overview, uh, the RFID data services work by having the readers connect to Zebra Savannah Cloud pretty much directly. So you don't have to have any on-premise hardware, servers, software, um, gateways, any of that stuff hooked up uh, at, at any of the local sites in order to connect these readers up to the Zebra Savannah Cloud. Um, it works through standard HD protocols. So, um, you know, just the only port is 443 that you need to have open and the readers will connect up to Savannah um, and they're connected up in a multi-tenant fashion. So the readers that are connected up for you or your partners or your customers are connected up um, and, and you know, accessible to, uh, to that person. But there's things that we're gonna talk about a little bit later on in this session around how we can provide access to different partners, customers, suppliers, uh, that inf you know all of that information uh, across the supply chain, um, even utilizing this tenant system. So there's a lot of different interesting things that can be done with this that uh, really make it a, a useful tool in your tool set when you're working with fixed RFID readers. Um, once it's connected up to the Zebra Savannah Cloud, we provide you with standard REST APIs that allow you to both manage the readers as well as get data from the readers, the, the actual read information um, coming from the readers uh, being pushed out to your different applications um, or to your application, somebody else's application. Uh, so it provides that sort of level of complexity where we're, we're sharing the information across the supply chain, depending on how your, your customer wants to have it shared. So there's a couple of different components to this. Uh, one of the services uh, is part of this data services for RFID is the event subscriptions, which we're gonna be digging into a lot more today. But from a high level, this essentially allows you to get the RFID tag events sent directly to the cloud um, and you know, kind of keeps, uh, keeps that path through there. And part of what we're digging into today is how we can do that yet still make it that um, we're not going to overload your your local network, uh, at least unless you set it up that way. Um, that we're not going to overload your local network, um, but still have this stuff sent out to the cloud um, and not overload the, the local cloud either. Um, so there's lots of different things that can be done to make that work, and we're going to be digging into that a little bit later on in this session. Um, but from a high level, it allows you to capture the events in pretty close to real time. Usually it's sub-second, depends a little bit on where you are in the world. Um, sends the tags um, to your services. So this is all RESTful API types of endpoints. Um, so APIs and the, the event subscriptions are primarily through standard REST webhooks. Um, so we can send them off to your different, uh, your different services in, in a secure fashion. Um, we also will add the GS1 decoding to that if you choose to add that to that service. Um, that's a free add-on to it. Um, and uh, there is a way to set up these subscriptions either via a user interface on the Zebra developer portal or through an API, which we'll go through again later on in the session. Um, and then there are several read modes which can be configured on the reader to determine how and where and when um, the 
reader will send data up to the cloud. So it's not just sending a stream of events um, for locations of products, but you can actually configure essentially when and how it actually gets sent up. Um, the other portion to this set of services are management and monitoring. So essentially, you can figure out what the current status is. Um, you can configure a lot of information on there. So you can figure the network, you can figure the antennas, uh, the read modes, which we'll, you know, we talked about a minute ago. Um, you can control uh, the GPO, the app LED, um, you know, different things like that. Um, and then you can actually do over the air firmware updates through this service. Uh, and newly added, just not on this slide, is the ability to capture the logs out of the readers as well. So lots of good information here that you can utilize um, when you're trying to actually manage the readers. Um, and then the third service that we have available as part of this, uh, uh, this uh, the data services for RFID is what we call analytics and reporting. This is essentially access to the storage of tag events that are coming through the, the Zebra Savannah cloud. Um, and so we're gonna provide you with the ability to uh, capture information about a specific tagged item um, and where it was through, you know, through its life cycle every time it was scanned and sent up to the cloud, um, as well as um, looking at a specific device, like a specific reader and seeing what flowed through that device um, and a few other different um, analytics that we can do off of that data. So all of that is part of this um, service. This particular service, as might, it might be mentioned separately, is, is actually um, a, a separate service, or not a separate service, but a, a, a separate charge. So it's, it's um, uh, an optional <laughs> item if you're, if you're talking to, if you're doing uh, data services for RFID. Um, setup of data services for RFID. So you can get access to our, uh, our um, trial license for being able to work with data services for RFID. You just have to contact your account team or your purchasing partner um, and they'll contact the account team to uh, get, the, get that demo access set up. Um, we have standard uh, three month free trial. You can set it up, you can work with the whole set of services and um, see how well they work for you, integrate them into your, your, um, your applications and uh, see if, if any one of your customers potentially wants, wants to buy it. Um, enrolling the readers is essentially on the developer portal and um, uh, Ben Horgan will show you how to actually enroll your readers, but essentially you go to the developer portal, um, there's a link to my devices and you can you know, enroll your readers into the service and um, documentation as well as there's a Postman collection on GitHub. We'll look at that Postman collection a little bit today as well, um, but it's, it's pretty useful to help get you kickstarted in the right direction. So all the information is available and um, there's also videos associated with most of this content as well that uh, helps you get started on uh, working with these data services. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about the read modes. Um, the read modes are essentially the way that you would set up the readers to control how often and when, uh, when and, and um, what triggers the, uh, the reader to actually send an event to the cloud. Um, obviously the reader is continuously reading all the time. Um, if anyone has worked with other reader software before, you might notice that uh, you know, you might get thousands of read per second. Um, and trying to send that information to the cloud, um, all of that information to the cloud, or even on your local network tends to get a bit uh, chatty, <laughs> should we say, um, and not, not necessarily conducive to actually working with them. And honestly, very little of that data might be relevant to your businesses. Now, there's plenty of different use cases where you do want to know uh, exactly where something is, uh, within your floor, every, you know, at, at, at any given time. Um, so if you want to know XYZ location and you want to know it in real time, um, this might not be the service for you. There's other services that Zebra provides that do a better job of that. What this allows you to do, though, is gives you the general location um, on a fairly quick basis um, 
that allows you to look across your entire supply chain with very minimal infrastructure. Most of the other solutions that you want that you want to do that XYZ location, there's definitely infrastructure involved um, and higher costs associated with that. So you have to look at your use case and figure out, do you really need to know XYZ location of every single product at all times? Um, or is it something where you just need to know the location of your products, um, you know, need to know that it passed through a certain location at a certain time, you need to know that it went from one supplier to another, you know, distributor, you know, at, at given timings, um, that type of information. It really depends on your use case and how you intend to use the data. Um, so that's sort of the initial thought process that you have to go through to figure out whether or not data services for RFID is the right solution or whether or not something like workforce, um, not workforce, <laughs> uh, motion, motion works warehouse or enterprise is the right solution for you um, in order to meet your needs. So that being said, uh, some of the different options we have for how to set up these readers and how to work with them from data services perspective um, are uh, the first one here is simple mode. This is the common mode that a lot of people are using now. Um, essentially, this is the ability to uh, figure out if something has gone through a specific location at least once. Um, so this is great for conveyor belts where you've got products flowing through uh, an area and you want to make sure that that product has flown, you know, to figure out where it's, it's been pushed through, make sure it's gone through the right location and um, you know, been sent on to the next, you know, wherever it is in the process. Um, so dock doors when it's in, in, you know, receiving or conveyor belts when some something's flowing through. Um, if you want to make sure that something's been received or sent or shipped, um, this is a great solution for being able to do that um, and uh, is probably our, our simplest solution. You basically just get a single event um, as soon as that reader sees a specific tag. Um, if you set up multiple readers, each one of them you know, is set up separately and uh, will tell you when it sees that tag. Um, so you might get multiple multiple reads from different readers, um, but that is helpful for figuring out as it flows through essentially maybe a distribution center. Um, as it's flowing across that distribution center or the manufacturing line, you could set up those different readers to figure out how it's flowing through that location, through that um, you know base location, um, or across multiple locations um, as your supply chain demands. So this is, is one of the more common uses for uh, this particular mode. Another mode that we have available is inventory mode. <clears throat> inventory mode is kind of what it sounds like. Um, it allows you to take an inventory of uh, the RFID tagged items uh, at, at uh, scheduled intervals. So essentially, um, you can set it up to be once a day, once an hour, once every five minutes. We don't recommend to go too low on your interval because then again, you get start getting up into the chattiness perspective. Um, and then, you know, if you're looking towards that, then maybe some of the other solutions that Zebra has for uh, track and trace are, you know, location tracking are maybe a better fit for you. Um, but if, if you need to know that, you know, something's, uh, you know, where something is at any given time, um, then this is a good solution for you. So being able to do an inventory of your products in a, a store or a warehouse, um, and then being able to track maybe where products or people have gone throughout um, a location, that's where inventory mode kind of shines is being able to tell you, oh, somebody's been in this area for, you know, for the last 20 minutes, um, or, you know, this product has been on the where, you know, warehouse shelf for the last, you know, 100 days. It gives you that kind of information that you can look at and, and understand, you know, where something is at any given time um, over time because it does do that scheduled interval of tracking. Uh, the third primary mode that we have available is something called portal mode. Uh, and this is a triggered read. So essentially what that means is that the uh, reader GPI <laughs> um, uh, mode on the reader itself um, is oftentimes set up to be hooked up to a, a door. Um, so as somebody walks through the door, it'll trigger a, an event that gets sent down to the reader and tells it to read uh, read tags that are flowing through that door, say in a retail situation where you want to make sure that um, tags are flowing through there, or in a warehouse situation where you want to see what's flowing through um, your warehouse or what's flowing through your distribution center in, through a specific set location like a portal that has a, uh, a 
electromagnetic or tr electro trigger that can trigger that in, uh, GPI on the device. Another option for this that's kind of interesting is being able to actually do sensor based um, inventories or sensor based information on this. So essentially taking inventory of products when a sensor triggers something interesting. So say a refrigerator um, gets under a certain temperature and that you know, smart, sen smart sensor on there triggers an event on the reader to say, take an inventory of what's in the refrigerator right now because there's something that went wrong and we need to know what's in there. Um, or something similar if a, you know, a fire happened and you want to know what the current inventory is at that point in time. Um, that's where this kind of comes into play. So I'm going to uh, do a demo here showing you how to set certain modes and what some, some of those modes mean and how they work, um, how to set up webhooks um, and some of the details on some of the new features for webhooks. Um, and then we'll do a little bit of reading to see how that all flows through the system and works. So on that note, um, I'm going to go through the quick sort of rundown of, of grabbing my information and starting to set this all up. Uh, I have the Zebra Developer Portal open, and I'm going to essentially go to the um, my apps page, which you can get to from a couple of different places. I tend to go in through the API documentation. and uh, go to my apps page from here. There's a couple of different methods, but this is one of the easiest. Um, and then this is where you'll see your apps. Um, for the data services for RFID, the apps will be sent, set up by uh, Zebra for you, um, both in the trial or if you decide to purchase the data service. Um, this is all set up through Zebra. Um, if you do need to roll your key for whatever reason, just um, contact the account team or Zebra uh, support and we'll rerun a key for you. In fact, Zebra support is probably a better route to go um, and give you a new key that you can use uh, within your different applications if there's any issues that you need to do that with. Um, right now, I've got a bunch of different things on here, but we're looking at the cloud management for RFID pilot. pilot. This is sort of my key for uh, the data services for RFID. Um, couple of different things that you can do with it, but I'm just going to grab the key from here. Um, and then I can go to a couple of different places. But first thing I'm going to do is, you know, maybe look at my event subscriptions or some of the other uh, pages on the portal. These can be found under the APIs page for data services for RFID. Um, there's all the, the main things that I mentioned earlier, three are both are all in here. Um, so we're going to look at the device management because there's a little bit of setup that you need to do to get the subscriptions and the events flowing through, especially when you're setting up the modes. The modes are set up through the device management for RFID services. I'm going to go in here and throw my key in, authorize it. You can also create a bear token through um, some of the different OAuth services that we have. Let us know if you need some support or help with any of the OAuth services. Um, some of them you do have to be whitelisted with Zebra before they will work, but um, you can work with our support team and we'll get you whitelisted so that you can use those services uh, for doing three-legged OAuth for, through Zebra. Um, but we have several different options for doing OAuth as well. So just you know, take a look, let us know if there's any problems or questions and we'll help you out with those. Um, moving on, though, um, the device management for RFID, I just threw my key in there um, as I'm just doing testing. The main thing that I'm going to take a look at today are um, the app LED, which we're going to work with a little bit. Um, so I'm going to try it out through my device ID in there, which is... So we're um, now going to try to use the app LED service to get the information about my LED status. And it shows currently down here that it's on default mode, which is good. 
Um, we'll be playing around with this, uh, the app LED uh, as we go through and do stuff, but I wanted to show you how to work with that. Um, and I'm gonna grab my reader ID again, and we're gonna pull up the mode information. So I'm gonna try it out, put the mode in there, and we'll see what current mode it is set up on my reader. So right now I have it currently set up as inventory mode. And I'm going to go through these modes in a little bit, but I just want to show you that currently speaking, it's set up in inventory mode for all the antennas um, and that the transmit power is currently set to the lowest, which is 10. Uh, the transmit power goes from 10 to 30. So 30 being the broadest range that it will be able to read tags from, so largest distance from the reader. Um, and 10 being, um, generally speaking, it'll pick it up within a couple of feet, but not much more than that. So it depends on the, uh, what your use case is. Uh, as we're doing demos, we don't want it to be uh, trying to pull information from uh, across my entire house. <laughs> Interesting to see what that would show. I haven't played around with that too much. So uh, at this point, I'm going to pull up Postman because um, I've got a couple of services in here. Um, and I'm going to pull up my tag identification mode. We're going to run the same request in here, which should show me the same information. Yep, shows the same information as what we just saw on the portal. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set What I do now is set my read mode to simple. Um, there's a couple of different things that you can do in here, but the easiest way to set up simple mode is just to say setting the mode to simple, putting the transmit power in here. You can set it to the antennas that you want it to set to. Um, you can also put some filters in here. I'm going to go through some of that stuff as we go through this, but I wanted to show you that um, this is sort of like the simplest way to set up the mode is through uh, just using the mode simple and transmit powder 10. That's all you really need to do. We're going to send this over. And you got a 200 OK, which went, went through. We're going to just do a quick verification. All of these uh, uh, postman, this whole postman collection, other than the, the simple mode inventory and the portal mode that I added in here, are available on GitHub under the github.com slash zebra devs. Um, if you look at, if you just do a search for Postman, um, it'll come up with a couple of Postman collections, including the data services for RFID one, um, giving you the option to pull those down. There's a couple of different um, collections, or a couple of different things in there that you can bring into Postman and run these services or run these tests for yourself and you know work with these services. So this one is set to simple mode now uh, with transmit power 10 and the antennas are set there. So if I want to then switch it back to inventory mode and say set it to um, say five minutes, I can go ahead and do that. Um, the interval set is units are days, hours, minutes, um, and seconds, it does not do subseconds, um, but it will do up to seconds. I don't recommend that you use it that much because use it as, as seconds or, or as low seconds like that because um, it increases the chattiness. And if you really need to have it subsecond types of speeds for your use case and really look at your use case to figure out if that's what you need, then maybe the solution isn't the right one for you. Um, it's just not designed for, for that kind of use case because um, it's designed for um, more across, across the supply chain, across the um, user space. Um, if you need those types of quick responses, especially if you're doing triangulations, that sort of thing, then using something like a uh, warehouse management software that Zebra provides is a better tool set for you. Um, but in a lot of cases, you don't need that. So that's where some of this stuff comes into play. Um, so we set it to five minutes, inventory, transit power, 10, uh, again, the lowest. Um, running that, going to the 
pull that up, it shows the amount that I put in there. And then the last mode in here is portal mode, um, which is not set up properly. So what I'm going to do, because I know this is wrong, is I am going to go back to the developer portal. And there is a guide in here, the RFID Cloud Developer Guide. We have updated this guide recently. So if you looked at it originally, you'll, um, you'll notice there's some big improvements to that, including information about the different modes. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up uh, portal mode in here. And it has a quick example of an op for portal mode. Um, and I'm going to pull that in, grab that body, go to Postman. throw that in there. So I set it to the first antenna, set the mode as portal. Then the trigger is essentially on the reader itself, the GPI uh, port on the, on the reader. Um, there's a couple of different uh, ports that you can hook up to. And uh, this is saying port number one, which is the standard GPI port. There's a few others in there, but the standard one is, is port number one. Um, and you do want to look at your reader user guide to just make sure that you're hooked up to the right port uh, on the physical reader. Um, so that's port number one. And you can actually trigger on a low, um, uh, a low energy reading or high energy reader reading um, to, as your signal for whether or not you want to trigger reading. Uh, it just depends on your tool or your um, sensor or whatever is activating this, whether or not it's normally high and triggers at a low, or whether it's normally low and triggers at a high. Um, so you could set that up through here. Uh, the stop interval is the number of seconds that it will continue to read after it sends the last new tag. So say there are five tags in the area. Um, it will go ahead and start reading once it's been triggered. And it will then um, it'll read the five tags, you know, over the course of usually, you know, less than a second. Um, it'll read the five tags within the area and it'll keep on reading for three seconds just to see if anything is slightly out of range or, you know, within that, you know, entering that area within that time frame. So say you've actually got a portal door and somebody's coming through and because of the way it's set up, it doesn't it wouldn't be in range within, you know, within the you know, first millisecond, second that it's in there. So you can set that timing to say, I want to read for three seconds just to make sure that somebody is actually flowing through that door. Um, so that stop interval is, is how long it waits before it's, you know, after it sees the last new tag that it's seen to trigger that. It will send up events for each of the new tags, but it won't send up an event for um, for each time it reads that tag. So if you've, you've got a you know, single tag in that area, it's in that area for the full, say, three seconds, um, you'll get one event for that specific tag. You won't get the, you know, the 300 events because it actually might have seen it 300, you know, actually read it 300 times because that's how readers work. Um, and then again, the transient power saying you're looking at a very small area that you want to look at. So we can go ahead and set that up. And you got a 200 OK. We're going to do a get on that. And it's showing that information. Now I'm going to go back to simple mode. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually add a filter to this. So filters are a way to essentially um, limit what information or what, uh, what tags are sent from the readers themselves. So essentially assuming that there are specific types of tags that you don't necessarily want the reader to <laughs> send to your back end. So say, <coughs> sorry. You don't necessarily want to send the tags that are associated with somebody's cell phone or somebody's credit cards or whatever else is going through there. Um, you only want to send the tags for the products that you are concerned with. 
So the filters allow you to actually um, filter out in, or in what exactly you want to have sent out to your back end. Excuse me. So we have a couple of different matching. Um, you can do a, a complete match or a regex match. Um, gives you a couple options for the values that you can put in there. So this is essentially assuming that the APC value starts with 3032 um, and has you know, certain aspects to it. Um, and then this is basically saying you only want to send tags that have that value. That's what the operation include means. Um, if it says exclude, then that would mean you don't want to send any tags that have that value. So a couple of different ways to cut that. You can add that filter to uh, any of these uh, modes, and that will allow you to um, you know, can, you know, further bring in how much data you're sending to the cloud. Now, there are options, which we'll, we'll talk about a little bit later on in the session, around once that data is in the cloud, doing additional filtering, doing additional using of filters to configure where the data is sent. That's assuming, though, that that data is actually getting to the cloud. This is basically saying, I don't want you to send any tags that are outside of this filter that I'm setting up in here. Um, so it really depends on what you're intending to do and, and that kind of thing. But it, it's it's useful for limiting the amount of traffic that the readers are actually sending, sending to the cloud and filtering out anything that's unwanted. Um, or isn't relevant to your, your business processes. So that being said, um, I'm going to set this back down to, uh, actually, we're going to set it to inventory mode. And I'm going to set it to one minute so we can run our demo. So well, now that I've set that up, I'm going to just verify it's run through. Yep, OK. Now that that's set up, first thing I'm going to want to do is actually start reading the tags. You do configure um, whether or not you're starting and stopping reading tags. Now, if you do power off the reader, it'll remember what it was you know, before you powered it off. Um, but you do configure whether, you know, especially, especially to start with, whether or not you want it to start reading tags or whether or not you want it to stop reading tags. Um, so that's, that's one of the first things that you're going to want to do there is make sure that you're starting to read tags. It'll give you an error message if you've already started and, and you try to start it. It'll also give you an error message if you tried to stop it and you're already stopped. I got the 200 OK, which means that it is starting to read tags now. So uh, the other part of this session is going to be talking about the uh, subscription setup, the, the event subscription setup. Now, there's a couple of different ways to do that. Um, one of them is actually going through the developer portal. Um, you can actually work with your event subscriptions on the developer portal. Uh, it's under the My Subscriptions page. So zebra.com uh, or developer.zebra.com slash my subscriptions. Um, you do have to be logged in to get to this page, but essentially you can go in here, you can add a subscription in here, um, or you can manage the subscriptions that you've already set up. Um, you know, naming the subscription to something, whether or not you want it to be a post or a put out to your endpoint. Um, any headers, um, which I'll show you how to configure in there, the actual endpoint that you want to send the data to, uh, your tenant, which will be pretty much pre-selected for you, any readers that you have set up and connected. Um, and then you can add some filters in here. We use uh, JQ filters and transformation uh, within our webhooks, which I'll show you in a, in a minute. Um, but essentially, the filters allow you to um, say, for this specific webhook, I only want to send the event to my endpoint when it meets specific filter conditions. Um, so if it has this uh, EPC value, or even if it has this GS1 um, uh, uh, component value, you can also do that because when it's flowing through the cloud, we're de doing the decode into GS1. If it's a GS1 decodable uh, tag, we're doing the, the conversion to GS1, and the filter happens actually after that. 
So essentially, you can filter on an EPC value, but you can also filter on a component value or um, really any of the other values within that decoded data, um, which gives you a lot of, lot of uh, the things that you can do with this. So you can actually play around with those filters to get the, the data set that you really care about. Um, and you can actually set up multiple webhooks so that specific types of data, um, say a specific product line gets sent to one location and a specific other product line gets sent to a different location. Uh, the data for that at least. Um, so that gives you a lot of flexibility as to how you can actually configure these and, and send that data to different places and do different things with it. Um, and then the JQ transformation uses that same JQ um, uh, methodology to take the data that we've you know, essentially created um, and set up and uh, essentially change it to what you want it to be. Um, so say the 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 data model that we're using doesn't match your database and you want it to be just simple, send it and store it in my database. Um, you can actually use the, the JQ transformation to modify uh, what comes out of that and just you know, cherry pick the data that you care about, add additional information to, to that so that you can store it in your database how you want to store it. Um, you know, there's limitations to that, but it's it gives you a lot of flexibility to make it simple for you to integrate it into your endpoints and your databases the way you want to. Um, so that being said, we have in here I have a we're gonna pull that out. And I'm going to that's not right either. <laughs> um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to grab my API key again. Make sure to copy that in. And throw my API key in here. Grab my tenant again. Some of these services do require the tenant information, uh, which you can get from the uh, My Tenant API. This is to make it so that um, if you have multiple customers or multiple partners that you are working with, that they can we can essentially configure who has access to the data. Um, so this is essentially the four subscriptions that you saw on that page that I was just showing on the develop portal. Um, so it shows the different URLs for each of them. Um, and we'll play around with these in a minute. But these are the, um, the different webhooks that we have configured for this reader, um, for this user. So um, let me pull up one of them specifically. Okay, so what we have here is the subscription for um, for this particular setup. Oops. Okay. Um, so how I've got it set up is I've currently got it sent to, let me pull this up in a little bit different way. That's what's wrong, okay. Okay. 
so what we have here is this is the webhook that we were just looking at there. Um, what it has in it is some information around how that uh, the different filters and different functionality of that particular webhook. Um, so it has an ID for it. It has um, the change fields is essentially if you want the um, <clears throat> If you want the API to, or if you want the service to decode it into GS1 format, then you'd put in here decoded tag data. If you want it to not decode it, then you would put in here raw data. And that would allow the system to actually convert whether or not you wanted to get the decoded or the raw. Um, just depends a lot on whether or not you're actually using GS1. If you're not using GS1, it's faster to just not bother with having it try to use GS1. Um, so putting that, setting that to be raw data if you're not using GS1 for your uh, tags makes it easier. Um, and then we have the um, the device identifiers, which basically is a filter to say I only want to <clears throat> get reads from this particular reader. And then the JQ filters is I'm going to say I want to filter data to only get um, sent information from this particular tag. So this is a specific tag that I'm saying this EPC um, uh, layer on my tag um, that I only want to get this specific tag. Um, and I'm going to change what gets sent to the endpoint to be just this information, this port and state. Um, and then I'm going to, I basically named my endpoint and I'm actually using one of the management APIs. Like I said, but we were talking, we were looking at it before, we were actually playing around with the idea of having the, essentially what this is gonna do is this is going to uh, when it takes a specific tag, what it's going to do is send a event to the management APIs to trigger the GPO port, the output port on the actual reader. And that output port is actually connected up to a light stack. So what this is going to do is this is going to, um, when it detects a specific tag, send a trigger out to the light stack that's connected directly up to the uh, direct connected up to the reader. The, you know, the way we're doing this is because we actually have access to these management APIs and how this is set up, we can actually set the header as well through in our API key and have this all actually work and flow through the system. So this is going to uh, send the data out to um, this management API to trigger the GPO port and have it, you know, send a, send information out to the light stack to trigger to turn it on. Um, you can also have it trigger to change the app LED and change the color and, and timing on the app LED. So there's a bunch of different things that you can do with this that make it actually pretty interesting and, and fun. This is just one uh, potential thing that you can do with it. Certainly, I'm hoping that as we go through this, you're starting to see that there are different options for how to utilize these services that fit within your use cases. This is just for a demo purpose for turning on a light stack, a light on a light stack. Um, but you can trigger it to do all sorts of other things as well. Say you see a specific tag, tag go through and you know that it is the um, you want to make sure that the something gets reordered because it sees a specific tag, um, or say you want to do other things uh, like uh, uh, trigger door opening when it sees a specific tag um, or sees a group of tags. Um, there's lots of things that you can do to uh, set this up so that you you know when you're sending this data, you can trigger events. You can also just send this straight out to a database. Um, that's the probably the easiest way to go with this is just sending this off to a database. But in order to sort of show some of the different options, we we set up this demo so that it would trigger a light stack. Um, and you can kind of see it in action. 
So that being said, we've started reading our tags. We've got a couple of different filters in here. Um, and we are going to now take a look and see it going into the database. And then we're going to see it triggering the light stack as well. So pulling up. So this is essentially simulating my database. And I've got my wonderful tags here. So lots of different, lots of different RFID tags. And I'm going to throw them onto my reader. And it's, you can see events are showing up here on the side of the screen as each tag got put onto the, my device. And you can see the body here. It's done the full GS1 decode on these, pulling up the components of the GI AI on this one. The first time it goes through, it takes a little bit of time, but after that, it's actually really quick um, in order to make sure that it's it's uh, keeping things up. But because I just started this up and this was the first set of tags that ran through, it took a little bit of time to sort of get spun up and reading. Um, so that's why you see the larger milliseconds on these. But most of these are actually pretty quick uh, as far as the timing from when um, the reader first detects the tag um, to when it actually starts sending data up to, or until you actually receive the data on your endpoint. Um, I do have this set up in inventory mode, so it's continuing to add additional tags in here um, as it goes through every minute. I think I've got set up to one minute um, to do that. So. We are seeing that flowing through this in, through this um, this setup here, and now what I'm going to do is go back to my subscription and I'm going to update. Update this one. And what I'm going to do here is make sure it is running. So I verified now that the service is actually running. And so we're going to run the demo here. I'm going to turn off my background so that you can actually see the light stack that I have sitting right in front of me here. And what I'm going to do is take that and put it uh, next to my reader, or take my tag, and put it next to my reader, and see that the light gets turned on when I do so. So, and there we go. Nice light is on. And that shows that what is happening is that the tag is getting read by the reader, and uh, the event is going sending through the cloud and getting sent back down through the management APIs to the GPO port on the reader and triggering the light stack that's attached to it. So hopefully that helps you get some ideas on some things that you could use with this technology and helps you proceed forward. Um, please, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to uh, talk with me on the Q&A right after this session and or um, there's uh, on the forums on the portal or contact uh, your account team to set up a conversation. So thank you so much and see you then.